right, well, hello, brother. How's it going? How's it going for you, too, man? I'm going pretty good. Good. Do you have a good holiday season? Oh, yeah. They're, they're really enjoyable. You know, the, the holiday is really good. We had a lot of family. In fact, we, my step-grandson had a birthday today, and we're all celebrating right. it. And uh, he's opening presents and everything. So, um, yeah, it's been a good holiday season uh, for me. How about for you? Pretty good. I was at that birthday party, and I noticed he did not have only a few presents there was a lot of oh yeah <laughs> lot of yeah hey, oh. well everybody loves him i think you know like he's in the family like he's he's such a cute kid you know and all that so, i have to admit yeah. i have to admit yeah, he's a really good kid really i mean just great looking you know very peaceful yeah. very very nice friendly issue number one in order to compare the energy efficiency between a gasoline and electric car Life cycle analysis studies examining the losses from well to tank and tank to wheel need to be analyzed. You know, our brother says, oh, yeah, it's great because you plug it in and we're only I'm only, you know, charging my build only goes up a little bit and I'm going all this distance in miles. And so maybe that's not really a good a comparison. So see, so, so just just on the surface, you got to take the whole thing into account. You know, life cycle analysis again. That's right. What you call life cycle. That's what, so it, yeah. And so we're going to kind of like try to incorporate more of the of what goes into that production so so you know you produce gasoline by you know you got a well you got a refinery you got transportation all these things like that so there's a lot of cost and, and energy that goes into giving you that gasoline right so yeah so you got any have you looked into that yeah, yeah i've looked into it so when they do a life cycle analysis they do uh well to wheel but it's separated into two different parts it's separated from the well to the tank and then from the tank to the wheel okay so like for example if you're getting fuel from gasoline or diesel or whatever so the, the well to the tank is like all the extraction the transportation the inefficiencies there that, that you're like dealing with and then from the tank to the wheel is how much energy um, is used to propel the car from the from, okay. from, from combusting the gasoline and all that very good uh for the electric car if you're using fossil fuels it's kind of the same idea because you're you have to extract like the coal or the natural gas and then that has to go through all the transmission lines and then that goes to the so that's from the what the well to the tank so when you compare the two for electric vehicles much more from what they say it's like i think it's, you're looking at like 60 70 percent so there's a big difference in between those two but then when you look at from the from the tank to the wheel the electric car is supposed to be much better from yeah, what that's they say. much more so if you look at from engine to to wheel for like a gasoline car, its efficiency is what, like 20, 30%, something like that? Yeah, overall the efficiency is about 20 to 30%, and it doesn't matter if it's an electric or a, or a gasoline vehicle. But if you're talking about fossil fuels, like if right. you're getting your your um, electric car charged by coal or, or natural gas. So the, it, the efficiency is about, um, yeah, it's about the same. Now you'll see a lot of studies on the internet that say that the electric car is three times the efficiency of the of the gasoline vehicle, but that's based on like a, a Tesla model, and it's based mainly on the efficiency of the engine. Not you know they're not really right. taking they're just taking engine the, to wheel, the, yeah, engine to wheel. They're not taking into account right. the the grid and stuff. What you're going to talk about more. I mean, what do you know about that? About yeah. The Issue number two. Since electric cars charged by fossil fuel plants are much more energy inefficient, it would be important to know how much of our grid is run by fossil fuels. That's what, because it starts to get really complicated because when you talk about the gas engine being, say, 25, 30% efficient, but the Tesla model being like 80 to 90% efficient, that's just, just pure energy once it's already charged and once there's gas in the tank, right? So... So that you think, oh, the oh, the electric car kicks everybody's butt, but 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 maybe not. So what you have to do is you have to take that percentage of how we get electricity, how much of that is fossil fuels, and how you know how much, and then how much of that is um, is green energy, right? And but even green energy has fossil fuel connected to it because that was what it, you know they had to produce it, and there's a life cycle cost to that too. So it starts to get very complicated. But let's just say around two thirds of the grid is currently right now produced by fossil fuels okay so well so let's say 66 percent and that takes into account that doesn't take into account that, that you that even you know with your solar panels and wind energy you have a fossil fuel equivalent to that because of what about production and things like that so maybe more like 70 in the 70 70 some percentile range issue number three 
There are many contributing losses of electrical power in the grid that result from energy conversion to electricity, transmission, marginal distribution, and in-home types of losses. Okay, number two is, you were saying roughly, you thought about 60 percent of, the, of there was inefficiencies in the grid in, a, in a, a big power plant say like a you know natural gas or, or whatever you're gonna have an energy to electricity that's what they're trying to do too in a, in a power plant you have like say a big generator you know turning to, to produce electricity that is 54 percent efficient okay that's it so almost half of it is consumed just by converting that you know, fossil fuel into energy or any electricity, okay, and get it onto the grid. And then another 5% is being consumed by the power plant itself to run the power plant. So <laughs> that's that's where you probably get your 60% from. Most people cite that number, you know, 5% from the power plant, 54% from just producing, um, getting um, energy into electricity. But then when you look at the rest of it, okay, there's Transmission loss, okay, that's five, another five to seven percent. You know, through the lines, to to the transformers and things like that. Okay, you're gonna lose another five to seven percent. Then you, you also have to have some margin. What this one they don't say in the um, in any studies like that, but you have to have a little bit of electricity. You can't run a power plant at 100 percent capacity. Okay, it's gonna burn it up. It's, it's gonna something's gonna go wrong there, right? So you're you have to run it at least down, you know, 75, 80 percent. That's pretty high even still too. So you, you're wasting a lot of energy just keeping that margin going because there might be surges in power and they, and they estimate all that and they, and they ramp it up as they go, but they have to have still some electricity that they're always, you know, margin there. So you got to add maybe another 20% there. Then, you know, as it gets distributed through the power lines in a three phase system like that, whatever power is not balanced in that say neighborhood or in that region where the transformers are, is going to go is going to just be unused in return so it's a waste of power i don't know how much that is but and they try to keep that pretty well balanced but you're talking to maybe another 10 percent there okay, and then when it finally gets to your transformer and gets into your house there's a they, they estimate depending on what you're using it for it could be another five percent loss up to 90 percent loss okay that much wow that's a that's lot, a lot that's because a, that's a big loss when you think what do you think? A, so now we're, we're talking about charging stations. What do you think the loss there is in a charging station? It's up to like 15 to 40%, um, okay. depending on how efficient you're. So, so again, you're, you're, you're wasting all those. So if you add all that up, you're talking about the inefficient, the grid is really only about 30, maybe, maybe 20 to 30% efficient. Okay. After all that. To calculate the overall efficiency of the grid, all the efficiency losses are multiplied together to get the result. So for this example calculation, there are five different factors that are multiplied together and they give a, a result of a 20% overall grid efficiency. Issue number four, since the overall efficiency of the grid is only around 20%, it can be concluded that the gasoline car is more efficient than the electric car due to the grid itself. So, so, then, so when you're talking about Tesla being 80 to 90% efficient, but you're plugging into a grid that's only 20% efficient. So that's that equals that out from the gasoline engine being only say 20 to 30% efficient, you know, from its gasoline part. So I think it's difficult to compare apples to apples here. We're comparing apples to oranges. But it looks to me like the um, right now anyway, the grid inefficiencies over encompass some of the inefficiencies from a gas engine, especially if you got a really nice economy car or a diesel. You know, a diesel car, and then if you if you use a diesel car or diesel you know engine like a, like a big truck uses a diesel engine, they're going to be a little more efficient than a gas car too. So, yeah, I think the efficiency is much higher. Like right. when you compare you either to an electric car or a gasoline car, it's, you're looking in the 30s to you know above 30 percent right. uh, for the efficiency for a diesel engine. So that's still something to take in mind. So, and in, in addition, if you use biodiesel, it's supposed to be like the the energy, the net energy return from that is supposed to be three times higher than with like petrol diesel because of the lower energy that you're using to produce the biodiesel and stuff. Right. So that's a good, that's a very good point. That using biodiesel may be right now a better option than pure electric car. Anyway, if until next time, we're going to, we'll talk about some energy and agricultural perhaps and uh, some uh, climate change subjects and uh, 
So from until then, we'll bid you farewell.